Something you should know about bullies is that they can dish it out all day, every day, but when you give them the slightest bit of criticism, they start fuming. Rebecca was like, aha, I know what's going on now. The other thing you should know about bullies is that they are cowards. Oh, it's private. Hmm. Got something to hide there, Sky? Something maybe just a little bit incriminating? Anyway, so I'm going to play my um, body shaming section of my video. Let's have a watch. So I can body shame all over again, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, share screen. One day I'll get the freaking hang of this. Wait. Also, I, th I think body shaming, this whole thing about we shouldn't body shame, I think that's so stupid. All you, all you fake little sensitive dorks out there trying to control what words people can say, you're the reason the internet sucks now. You're the reason <laughs> the internet sucks now. All you are fucking lames. I mean, I've said this before. We have a ridiculous amount of PC culture and like cancel culture, and anyone really wanting to police what people say can go suck my dick personally. There's nothing that stops me offering coaching to my audience, not just for eating disorders, like specifically binge eating, mm -hmm. but I can offer coaching for stress relief, a whole bunch of stuff I work with. And anyone really wanting to police what people say can go suck my dick personally. Bullies often like to deflect their behavior as just joking, which is a form of gaslighting. Commenting on someone's choice of food or how much they've been eating, even in a joking manner, is still body shaming. Like specifically binge eating. Like specifically binge eating. And it can be painful, especially if you don't know that person's relationship to food. Or just Something. after eating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, eating can also affect it, so... If, uh, like, right after I eat, I'll, like, feel fat, and then I'll look at myself, and I think I'm fat, even though, like, I don't look any different. So, that's the general, like, symptoms that I have. And when, when you try to talk with a narcissist about things that are different between the two of you, and, and by the way, that's a normal thing that happens in any kind of relationship, that scares them. You see, keep in mind, they, they live with an, a sense of alternate reality. They have a very fragile ego, and so they, they want to interpret and arrange truth in front of them in such a way that keeps that fragile ego propped up. So when you come along and say, well, I don't agree, or there's something I think you need to consider, it's like, no, I can't do that. And so one of the primary things that narcissists do in the midst of differences with you is they go into a deflection mode. They'll try, they'll do anything except focus on the topic at hand because what that does is it allows them to have an upper hand and uh, they also want to make sure that they keep you confused or they let you know that you're way off base, anything at all to keep them from having to answer your questions or to receive input that they don't particularly want to receive. Bullies share very common traits with narcissists. As we all know, bullies and narcissists simply cannot be held to any accountability. When they start to feel the heat, know they are in the wrong, but are too cowardly, they typically run off to find others. So if you want to talk about problems, let's bring everybody in on this. And so they reverse it onto you and then make you to be the problem, and it allows them to think, yeah, see, once again, I'm the best person in the room. I think we all know by now that Tristan from Primal Edge Health is a hypocritical gaslighting turd. She seems to pick individual clips and she puts them together to try and make it, she put in, put in like a slant on things to basically discredit somebody. You guys wanna hear, you wanna hear the one that Tommy was just telling about, the, uh, the, the timestamp where she speaks about her father? But Tommy, I'm disappointed. As Tommy Kelly said, Skye has battled with an eating disorder herself and is a great recovery coach. <clears throat> Maybe not, but anyways. And we've both worked at the same charity. Tommy Kelly has also struggled with an eating disorder. He lives in Scotland and says, I am an ambassador for the Be Eat and See Me Scotland, which are the eating disorder and mental health charities here in the UK. The main point and issue that I'm emphasizing here is that bullying, even as a quote unquote joke, can contribute to someone's eating disorder. A study completed by the UK Charity Beat, the same one that Tommy Kelly is a part of, found 
that 600 participants surveyed, 90% of the respondents admitted to being bullied at some point in their lives, with more than 75% of individuals suffering from an eating disorder admitted that bullying was a significant cause of their disorder. As many as 65% of people with eating disorders say bullying contributed to their condition. 47% of girls aged 11 to 21 say that the way they look holds them back. 94% of teenage girls and nearly 65% of teenage boys reported to have been body shamed. Those who watched a stigmatizing video ate three times as many calories afterward compared to those who watched a non-stigmatizing video. And lastly, but certainly not least, a big part of the whole Beats Support or Promises program is that we take care to avoid using content that may be triggering or harmful to our supporters. Hmm. Anyone really wanting to police what people say can go suck my dick, personally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she, she doesn't body shame is a disclaimer. So apparently, okay. as long as you say, I don't body shame at the beginning, it's fine. You know what? I do it out of context, to be fair, and I have a disclaimer saying that. And I'm always like, check the original videos. I don't think she has disclaimers. She just gets away with it because she's all like, I am a serious journalist. Well, I'm a troll, so I get away with everything. Sky and Tommy like to joke about me being a journalist, and that's because I'm not tricked by their gaslighting and other manipulation tactics. It bothers them because I can see right through them, and that I've exposed their true colors. I'll leave you all with just one question. If you found out that your eating disorder mental health coach was participating in this type of online bullying, what would you do?